Hi, my name is Mark Ensley. Uh, so I'm doing this because I am in a position now where I figure a lot of people uh, watching this would like to be in a similar position. Uh, so I graduated with my IT degree from University of Central Florida and I know when I went through it uh, I didn't really have a lot of guidance as to what I needed to do to be successful with this degree. Uh, now this degree is one of the technology degrees. It's somewhat similar to computer science. Um, we probably, I'd say we take a lot of the same classes, a little more than half at least. Uh, same weed out classes anyway. But um, the thing is, a lot of people don't really know what the degree is all about and how it differs from computer science and what the best path is to do well with it. So. The main thing is um, IT, you do a lot of programming, um, but you also do network-based things, some web-based stuff. Um, it's hard to know what kind of job to look for after that. Uh, it's very easy to go through the degree and really be confused as to you know, what you're supposed to do with your life after that. Um, so. I'm right now uh, about to start a position at John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory and that's uh, my position is an applications developer but more specifically I'm a junior ServiceNow developer. Um, now that does mean programming obviously but it is in a platform, a specific platform um, that is kind of a niche skill that's hard to uh, get into without actually having worked with it. And that's my first tip for success uh, in the IT degree, is get an internship. Get something that'll give you some experience. It's really important that you have experience uh, when you go out and look for a good job. Now, the thing is, you don't have to if you don't have an internship or some kind of experience. I don't think it's hopeless for you. The degree's a little bit better than that. Um, but I know that it makes it more difficult to get into what I would call a good job. Uh, if you don't have that, you might find yourself kind of stuck in a support role, which isn't necessarily bad as long as you can find one that pays relatively well. Um, you really do want to get a job, if you can, that pays at least more than $40,000, um, and that's really on the low side. I really do think it's not unreasonable to aim for positions, you know, as, as engineers do, that pay fifty, you know, sixty thousand a year. Uh, that is really what you need out of college to kind of put your life together and, and start well. Um, so I'm sitting here in um, Columbia, Maryland, and I'm about to start my position at John Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory. And I want to tell you a little bit about how I got there. Um, so what I did was I looked for internships very, you know, hard. I really tried to find an internship that was good uh, when I started and I ended up at a company called ServiceNow. So you may or may not have heard of them considering you know if you're watching this if you're an IT or other tech major um, and you're watching this maybe you have heard of ServiceNow but the average person really hasn't heard of ServiceNow. Um, they run a development platform that companies use to uh, fulfill their business needs is a, a way to put that. Uh, a better way to explain it is if you are, say you're working at a company or you're going to school, you know, you use online systems like um, web courses is something we used at UCF. Uh, it's a little bit of a branded name for a Canvas system. So there are similar systems like that in workplaces that manage payroll and employee information and that actually keep track of large networks and devices on those networks. Um, employees log in to them the first thing when they get to work. They receive notifications through there. That system sends them the emails that they need to have. So that system is not something that the average consumer interacts with, but the average employee interacts with it all the time. They, a lot of times, don't actually know that it was developed in the ServiceNow platform. So I applied for a lot of internships, and what I did was I, I would look into the companies that I was applying to, and when I saw ServiceNow was a software company, and they were involved in cloud computing because the platform is generally run in the cloud, I 
got very interested in that, even though ServiceNow is not a name I'd even heard of. Heck, when I heard of it, I thought maybe it was some kind of geek squad type thing where I'm just fixing desktops. And the truth is there's, there's nothing wrong with fixing desktops and all, but you don't need a degree to do that. You can get, say, an A-plus certification from CompTIA. Um, if you're going for an information technology degree, you really should be aiming at least for in the long term to have a position where you're doing something higher level than just desktop support. Uh, it's okay to start there if you get out of school and you really don't have any experience and you can find a position that, that way, that's okay. Uh, usually those positions don't really pay well enough to justify the amount of money that you're spending on your college degree. Now, I went through ServiceNow and I worked there as uh, what's known as a TSE, uh, Technical Support Engineer. And my actual job title was a technical analyst intern. Now, I learned a lot about how uh, the IT world works when I worked there. And that gave me the experience I needed to know what to look for when I went for a full-time job. Um, now, I did consider like still working there and, and getting a full-time job there, which I, I could have done. Uh, but I also had uh, this offer from John Hopkins, and it looked very good to me. It was really exactly uh, what I wanted to do. Uh, it was a developer role, which I wanted to be in development, and it's in a, an area where I actually have family up here. Um, don't want to diverge too far into my own personal life, though. The, the main thing that I'm trying to say is getting an internship when you're an information technology student really helps advance your career. It's important that you consider it. Um, not easy to find an internship, I would say, but you really have to apply to as many places as you can, make sure they're good. Be careful, uh, especially when you're looking for full-time jobs. Uh, this applies even more so. There are companies out there that uh, I think Reviture is one of them. Um, that Those are not really good places to work unless you're very desperate. Um, because what they do is they hire you, put you through a coding boot camp where they pay you minimum wage for a month, and then they contract you out for thirty to 40000 when you really could be making a lot more than that. Um, the good thing about it is you do get experience from that, uh, but it really isn't ideal. You really do want to get kind of the way an engineer would. You want to get a full-time position that gives you a good rate of pay. Um, now what helped me out was I had that experience with that ServiceNow platform and I was able to use that to get a job that specifically focused on that. As I said, my title is Junior ServiceNow Developer, right? Now ServiceNow is not the only avenue that you can do this with. Uh, you probably heard of uh, .NET and you probably, if you search for jobs, you'll find plenty of junior .NET developers at different companies. That's another platform that is it's quite different from ServiceNow, but it's the same idea that if you know that platform, you'll have an easier time getting in right out of school. It is important to specialize. It's important that when you're in your senior year, you you can put something on your resume that not everybody else has, you know, coming out with a degree. Saying that you can program in Java and program in C is great and all, and you should definitely put that down considering that you took classes and learned how to do that, and you wouldn't be here, you know, you wouldn't have gotten your degree without being able to do it. Um, it's great to have that on your resume, but the thing is, is that, uh, how do I put this? Uh, everybody else has has that. So it doesn't, you're not really differentiated from every other person coming out with a similar degree. So what you really need is something that not everyone else has, something that you can search for the, a, a job using that specific skill. Now, Honestly, there are a lot of skills that you can pile on top of each other. Uh, other skills that I had that made it easier for me to get the job that I got was I know Angular, Angular JS, and that was another thing they wanted for this position. Um, and that's something, you know, I did work with that at my internship a little bit, but the truth is you can get that without any kind of internship. You can work on your own. Uh, and that's, you know, another thing I would recommend is personal projects. Uh, personal projects are important, and I know you're probably overwhelmed, you're doing a lot of schoolwork, you might not feel like you have a lot of time to do your own personal projects, but 
To get an internship, I would recommend doing some kind of personal project. Um, I What I did was I ran a server out of my apartment, just turned my desktop computer into a server, got a static IP address from my uh, ISP, and I started building a website, made a database, wrote PHP code to where the, the front end of the website could communicate with the database. I made a website where people can sign up. You know, they, re they register with the website, puts them into a database, they can then log in, and it reflects that they're logged in. Um, I learned how to do all that really on my own. The IT degree did not really teach me that much about how to do that. It, it taught me the very, very fundamentals, but actually putting it into practice on my own was a really good experience. Um, I recommend doing things like that, and putting that on my resume when I was searching for internships really set me apart from the other candidates because internships with good companies are very hard to get. They're, they're competitive. Everybody wants that internship with that good company when they're in college. You know, everybody wants that thing on their resume. And I eventually got that, but I did, I did need to work hard at it. Now, what I did before the internship was I actually worked as an SEO um, at another company called uh, Devo Consulting. And that company was about, you know, half marketing and half uh, technical stuff in WordPress. So I also have experience in WordPress, although that hasn't really helped me in the future. Uh, but that experience, paired with uh, the personal projects I had done, uh, were good enough to get me into a position at ServiceNow that is a, a reasonably big uh, software company. And so working with them as a TSC, um, a TSC stands for Technical Support Engineer. Um, it sounds, technical support, I think, may turn a lot of people off, but you're working with things like, um, with program, you know, JavaScript was the main language we would troubleshoot, and you have engineers, or, you know, engineers, as they call call them, they don't, a lot of them don't have engineering degrees, um, but they're referred to as engineers at work, and they come to you because the platform's in the cloud, they're having an issue on their side, and you have to figure out technically why that's happening. It could be something on our side of things. It could be a bug in our code. It could be a bug in their code. And so you work with, it's, it's a very high level uh, thing. It's, it's not like you're just going around fixing desktop computers, you know, replacing uh, motherboards, etc. You're really working with programs. You're working with higher level hardware like servers. Um, it's something I would I would highly recommend, be, you know, being able to put on your resume. And there's, you know, support a tech support job gets, um, you know, a lot of flack. A lot of people try to avoid it. Um, one of the reasons is because people don't like to work with customers. But the word customer really does um, mean different things. So with ServiceNow, the customers were engineers, you know, at at large companies, um, not your grandmother trying to reset her password. And you really, if you know, working somewhere where you are resetting grandmother's passwords isn't necessarily a bad thing. Any experience is better than no experience. And the closer you can get to the field, the better. It, it's, um, it's steps. You know, you're taking small steps to get to where you want to be. So anything that you can get, you should get. However, the higher up it is, the better. And so the, the thing at ServiceNow was, was really good. Um, the other thing I'd recommend to get a good internship is have a high GPA. <laughs> I mean, I know it's easy to say that, but having a higher GPA, you want at least a 3.2. If you're a little lower, it's not, not that bad. 3.2, 3.3, you know, higher than that if you can. I graduated with a 3.53, um, but if you're below a 3, that makes your life really hard as, fi as far as finding internships go. Um, and finding internships, it it's really important to actually establish establishing yourself so that you can find a good job later on down the road. Um, so what I did is after, you know, the internship was, was coming to a close and I started looking for jobs. And another thing I'd recommend when looking for the full-time job is try to search for specific skills, you know, skills that you have. Because if you're applying to the most generalized jobs, you're competing with a lot of people. And the, the chances are they may already have somebody onboarding when you see that application. So you really do want to look for skills that you have 
that other people may not have, right? So that's another piece of advice I would give. Um, it's really hard. It's a hard degree. IT is not an easy degree. Um, I understand that. And it, it's important that you do well. Um, but at the same time, you really need to focus on building your resume, on on building your skill set. Um, so you go through that and then you start looking for a job. But the internship, I'd say, is really important. Try to get an internship. Internships make the whole process of getting a full-time job a lot easier. And if you're an IT major specifically, do recognize that a lot of the organizations that you might be looking to work for are not very well known, but they're still very large and there's still a lot of, of career to be had in those organizations. IT, less often than computer science, um, actually has you working for a company that's customer facing. And when I say customer, I mean uh, the general population, right? So the general population doesn't really know about ServiceNow, but it's a big company. Um, really big in um, you know up in uh, Silicon Valley over there and it's just not well known by the general public um, and that's because the general public doesn't use it it's used by developers to meet business needs um, so right the main thing my main point is get an internship it's important it will help your career um, and if you play your cards right if you build your skills the way you know that you can you do the best that you can to um, build a skill set to put on your resume dot um, net is if I had not done what I done I had done dot net would be something I would have gone after and that's one I would uh, particularly recommend looking into because becoming skilled in the dot net platform I would say could really help you um, it's something that a lot of people are using right now and it's something that they generally don't teach in school in college anyway in most degrees so I highly recommend uh, looking after it um, but yeah uh, build a skill set put that on your resume the more um, institutional the experience with it is so an internship is much better than just playing around with it on your own on your computer um, but if you can't or, or for whatever reason don't get into an internship, do it as a personal project, be able to show it to somebody, those things will help you a lot. If you just go out with a, a resume that just says the standard things that you did in school, that's not a really bad situation, but it's going to be a lot harder to find a good job with that. So my main recommendation is build a skill set, get an internship if you can, and take that out to the workforce after you graduate. If you do that, you should be able to find a really good job somewhere.